It's Sylvia with Vintage Kitchen Vixen, and today I am going to go over some old-fashioned things I think we should all have in our homes. Now, the first thing on my list is a notepad. I like getting funkier colored notepads. This one is light blue because not only do I make lists on this, but I also write letters to people. Yes, I write letters. I'm old-fashioned like that, and I imagine if you're watching this video, you are old-fashioned at heart as well in which case you are at the right place. I started writing letters when I was 16 years old. I had at one point, I think I had 15 pen pals all spread over around the world. There's something magical about putting pen or a pencil to paper and getting out those thoughts or those heartfelt notes. On that note, stationery or even note cards are a good thing to have on hand in case you want to keep up that kind of correspondence. And while we're on the subject of correspondence, an address book? Okay. I know having everybody on your phone is really easy, but I don't personally keep addresses on my phone. I don't want to save them to Google Maps. It's not, it's never been my kind of thing. I got this, actually, this was upside down. <laughs> I got this address book when I was in grade nine or grade 10. Yes, I've had it for a very long time, and it's probably a high time for me to get a new one because I have addresses in here of people I haven't talked to since high school. I do add new addresses in here whenever they come up and even phone numbers. Funny story, when I got my first cell phone, I was in university and it was a flip phone and it was just something I needed out of necessity, but I swore to myself I would never rely on my phone as the main spot that I kept all my phone numbers. I am guilty of not writing down phone numbers in my address book. I should probably do that. Uh, but addresses, I always write them down and I keep them in here and it, and it comes handy come Christmas time when I'm writing and sending out holiday cards. And since we're talking about paper products, I keep notepads by the dozen in my house. I have probably, <laughs> I don't even know how many notebooks I have. Um, like, I, I don't know. I have a notebook hoarding problem and I I don't want to throw out my notebooks that are full of notes because... I figure one day I want to go back and reflect on them or reminisce. No, it's always a, a nice trip down memory lane. But I write everything in my notepads. I write out my daily lists. I write down notes when I'm talking on the phone. Like everything is in a notebook. I write down recipes. I also have like a day planner where I like jotting everything down because a phone doesn't cut it for me. I know for many people, phones are more than enough. But for me, it's not enough. I not only need it in my phone, but I need it on paper. I need it on the calendar that's on my fridge because yes, calendar is another thing that everybody should have. Everybody should have a calendar on their fridge. You have that constant reminder when you're looking at your fridge, you can see the month ahead and it's just right there all the time whenever you open the fridge. Great spot for it. I don't know, maybe you have a better spot for your calendar, but that's where mine goes. Now we are going to move away from things that are writing related and we are going to move into things that are entertainment related. So one thing that I think everybody should have in their home, specifically the people who know how to play an instrument, is a musical instrument. Back in the day when there wasn't Spotify or YouTube music, or if we go back even further, CDs, records, radio, People relied on live music to entertain themselves. And that's something like when we think live music, that's something that we're thinking that we need to go out and see. I'm very envious of the people who know how to play an instrument. I tried learning how to play the guitar when I was in high school and then it kind of got too busy and I never got back to it. But lately my husband's been playing his trombone for our kids and then my four-year-old got a trombone, like a little tiny plastic one for Christmas one year. It's like a real real trombone but it's just lightweight so that he can handle it and it's just been so good so wonderful hearing that music wafting up from the basement while I'm cleaning the kitchen in the evening I don't know it's just music used to be a centerpiece of the home guests would come over and you'd have somebody playing the piano or people would just get together and they'd sing one thing that really stuck with me when I was visiting my aunt not too long ago is that she kind of put on a little concert for us she brought out her accordion and she played and it was lively and it was better than anything that would come out of a stereo or like anything that would come out of speakers. And something good to have too when the power goes out, especially if you don't want to use up your data on your phone. 
other old fashioned things that you can use to entertain yourself on those evenings where you feel like playing a game, a deck of cards, a checkers board or a chess board. Um, a puzzle is always fun to do. And then there are the classic board games that everybody knows and mostly loves. Um, games like Scrabble, Monopoly, Clue. It's always good to have something that you can play when the power is out or you just want to disconnect from television, your phone, or electronics, period. One of my favorite forms of entertainment are books. If you've watched a few of my videos, you probably know that I am a bookworm. So of course, I'm going to say everybody should have books in their home. Some people really enjoy reading their books on their Kindle because they can zoom into the print. Some people like listening to audiobooks, but I think it's always a good to have your tried and true favorites on your shelf just in case you ever need it, just in case the power goes out or your device fizzles out for some reason. It's, it's just nice to have something on your coffee table or on your shelves that you can reach when you need them. And while we're in the book department, I have a couple of other suggestions of old fashioned things that you should have in your home. So, and yes, they are book related. So <laughs> you may have been wondering what I have over here. So one thing everybody should have in their home. Oh, this, can you guess what this is? It doesn't have any text on the front. This is a dictionary. Everybody should have a dictionary on their home. It's easy to look a word up on your phone, but if you have kids like I do, do you really want them looking it up on the phone? I think that's too easy. Or even worse, like, hey, Google, what does this word mean? Like, define this word. Here's something about just opening up the dictionary and searching for the word that you want and coming across the wealth of words on your way to the word that you're trying to find. And then you just, you learn so much more that way. It's there's something about the hunt that's rewarding. If you don't have a dictionary at home, nobody, including yourself, is going to be picking up a dictionary when they're extremely bored and just reading the whole thing or learning a page worth of words. Or am I the only one who does that? Okay, that's enough of my dictionary show and tell. I know I should weigh this thing. It's probably at least 30 pounds. The other thing that I have over here, which will conclude my old-fashioned book recommendation, is a copy of your holy book of choice. So for me, it's having a Bible. And I have, oh goodness, I think I have a collection of five, maybe six different Bibles. This one is from 18, I don't even remember, 1875, 1872, 1875. I picked this up for 50 bucks at a church bazaar. It was, was, it was a silent auction and I was thrilled to win it. And it is the most breathtaking Bible I've ever seen. You probably don't know this about me, but I one of the things I studied in school was religious studies. So in addition to my Bibles, I have a number of other texts. Um, I just like having them. Like I find that um, spiritual texts, they feed my soul. So everything I read, I read everything. But, yeah, but I'm not saying that everybody should have a Bible in their home. Everybody has their own spiritual practices. Some people don't have any spiritual practices at all, and that's okay. If it's your life's journey, you get to believe what you want to believe. I think it's just good to have something that can nourish the spirit. If we're talking Buddhism, I really enjoy Pieces Every Step by Thich Nhat Hanh. I probably said his name wrong. I think I read this book once every four years. That seems to be my cycle. Once every four years. And it's just, it's like sipping a cool glass of water. Now we're going to get into more practical items. So one old fashioned thing that everybody should have in their home is an apron. I don't know why, but for some reason, aprons fell out of fashion. They used to be everything to the woman who worked in the kitchen because they would be her hand towel. They, she would use her apron to like collect produce from the garden or to hold on to a pan coming out of the oven, or it was just, it was everything. Okay, and maybe drying your hands on your apron doesn't sound very sanitary, but I mean, there are worse things that you can touch, like but the kitchen towel's just as guilty. The benefits of an apron is that it protects your clothes, and which means you don't have to wash them as often, and therefore prolonging the life of your clothing. And that's especially important if you invest in your clothing opting for quality over quantity. 
um, which is something I'm trying to slowly do. For the most part, I need to thrift everything because it's really hard to find sweaters that are pure wool. This is cashmere. And I found the best luck finding cashmere and pure wool sweaters in thrift stores of all places. Like, I don't know. I don't understand it. It's another old fashioned thing. It's opting for quality over quantity, especially with the wardrobe. So that's why Apron plays such an important role. And it's just fun to wear because you can get really cute patterns these days. And speaking of aprons, it just occurred to me that I completely forgot to tell you where the inspiration for this video came from. And I don't know if you've ever met Emmy over at Frugal Money Savers. I don't think she even knows that I exist, but I think she has a great channel. So I'll link the video that inspired me in the description below in case you want to um, give that a look. All right, so I have two items left on this list. The one item being a sewing kit. Now, I personally can't sew. I have been meaning to learn, I've been wanting to learn, and I just haven't sat down to learn. Uh, at one point, I was learning how to mend one of my favorite cardigans, and I got halfway through, and then I don't know what happened. I stopped, and I haven't been able to wear it. I should really get on that. But I do have a sewing kit, and my husband does use it to repair things because apparently he was taught how to repair things at one point in his life, and I wasn't. So he's not by any means like a good sewer, but he can get a button on if need be. And I have like a pile full of clothing that I have every intention to mend, and I just haven't because I don't have the time for it right now, but I really need to make the time for it. The very last one on this list is having an old-fashioned home apothecary. This is one I've been bringing up a lot lately because I think plant medicine is so important and building that self-sufficiency muscle and learning how to work with the things that grow around us and learn how they can heal us because there's so much that they can do and we don't have to spend money on cold medications or pills to drive away headaches when we have plants that can help us do it in a much gentler method. So when you have a well-stocked home apothecary, it'll let you blend your own teas. It'll help you make salves. There's so much you can do when you have your home apothecary. Like when my kids start coughing, the first thing I do is reach into my home apothecary and I pull out mullein leaf and I pull out thyme and plantain. And then I boil water on the stove and I put everything in there and I put a lid on it and then I let it steep. Sometimes it's just for 20 minutes of steeping. Sometimes it's much longer, but that's what I do. And then after it cools, I'll squeeze every last drop of goodness from that plant matter, and then I will heat it up again very gently, and I will add a bunch of honey. It helps to preserve it a bit, and it gives it that sweetness, and it's just so supportive. And start building a home apothecary and learn how to support your health with it. Anyhow, that is my list for today. It wasn't a huge list, but I feel like I've been talking enough. There are a lot of other things I could have added to this list. I probably could have kept going forever. Um, there are things like having a clothing line to dry your laundry on outside, or a cast iron skillet, or a watch, or a clock. I could have kept going, but in case you didn't watch my video about herbalism and the six best plants that you can grow to start building your home apothecary, I'm going to throw that up here on the screen so you can watch that next. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. The, the Buddhist one, it's peace is every step. Peace is present right here and now in ourselves and in everything we do and see.